a little bit about me. So I'm Heather Shapiro. I'm a technical evangelist here at Microsoft. Uh, most probably don't know what a technical evangelist is. I didn't know what it was uh, before I interviewed. Basically, it's the in-between between developers and then the community. So we're geeks who speak is what one of my coworkers termed us. Um, I still have the development background and I'm still developing, but I don't have a product team. So I'll come to conferences and speak, try to get people engaged in technology. Uh, my focus is in data science, so I do a lot of stuff with machine learning. Um, and then I go to student, to student hackathons, uh, meetups, startups, and try to get them engaged in just technology in general. It doesn't have to be Microsoft specific, um, but we just want to bridge that connection so that more people are getting involved in technology because if we can collaborate with other people, then that's the best way to be innovative, um, and I think that's really important. So a little bit more about me. I've always been a nerd. That's me in middle school, so I'm still the same height, but um, <laughs> so I haven't changed much, but I've always been really interested in education. I didn't necessarily know what I liked. I knew I was better in math, but I always preferred um, humanities at work. I was actually, sorry, reverse. I was better in humanities, so I did a law program in high school, um, realized that was not for me, but I was always much more interested in math. So I was kind of like, wait, I'm not that great at it, but I really like it, so what should I do? Um, can I, should I go the easy, easier route, which is where I'm comfortable, or should I keep going, press on, try to do something in a more technical or mathematical role? Um, so I knew that law wasn't for me, um, but I also got a lot of public speaking skills out of that. I also volunteered a lot in high school, so that was, it gave me a lot to take out of it in general. Um, but so college process over, I went to Duke, I just graduated, um, and I knew beforehand, but like I said, I wanted to do something in math or computer science, but I didn't know what, but Duke actually had a statistics program, and I was like, well, that sounds interesting, and I kind of just decided that that was going to be my route, and I never had actually taken a stat class. Um, so before, before even getting to Duke, before even applying to Duke, I visited, met with the stat uh, department chair, and I was just like, you're going to be my mentor. She was like, what? <laughs> um, but my, I can't say that it was all my own doing. My parents really wanted me to uh, trudge in and just like kind of infiltrate as much as possible. So even if I didn't get in, I made that connection. Um, so I knew what I wanted to do stat, came in knowing that I got there and I was just like, <laughs> like now what? What do I do now? Um, yeah, I like memes, so there's going to be a bunch. <laughs> so hopefully you can appreciate some of them. Um, yeah, so I got there and I was like, now what? I know I want to do stat, but I'm not the best in math, so I kind of had to start at Calc 1, uh, work my way up, and I got that first math test back, and I was like, oh my god, like, it's probably, like, a, the average is a 60. Uh, so I don't know if anyone's ever had that in their math classes, where the average is super low, and it's intended to be that way, um, just to show you how hard the real world is, and that the workplace isn't easy, is usually the uh, reasoning I get back from professors. Um, so I kind of went in and I was like, oh my gosh, this is super difficult. Do I want to change my route? Um, but that first semester, I also took a computer science class. And I started to realize how much they intermingle, um, computer science and statistics, and how I could use them together. Uh, so kind of went on that path. So so I know, yeah, like I said, college is hard. So I, start, I learned that from the first, first day, first semester, it's really difficult. And unless someone is there to help guide you, it could be a really hard place. I'm at the ACM event, so hopefully that's keep coming up. Um, so one thing is just like, don't panic if some of you are in that tough space right now. It, it will get easier, and even if you don't have a 4.0, it doesn't matter. I think the hardest question that I got asked during interviews was, why don't you have a 4.0? I was just like, ooh, wasn't expecting that one. Um, and I was kind of just like, well, I knew I needed help in certain aspects, so specifically math, and I, I got help. 
I asked for like a tutor, I paid for a tutor, and I knew that that was something that I needed, and even though I struggled with it, I was trying to do better for myself and make it a more reachable goal. <coughs> Okay, so these are some of my own tips of like how to take advantage of college college resources. It's not everything, it's just my opinion and what worked for me um, or what I found out along the way. So there's obviously other methods, other ideas that could be important, but this is just what I now that I'm in now that I'm after the fact, I can look back and say, maybe this would have been better to do then, or I'm glad I did that. Um, so like I said, finding a good mentor is really, really important. Uh, they can be a mentor in, uh, as a professor. It could be a, another student of yours, like, or a co-student, acquaintance. It, it doesn't matter. It could be anyone. Just someone that you can talk to and ask for advice. Um, and know that now that I've started with Microsoft, someone's told me, I should have a mentor for technical stuff, but then also for work-life balance, for diversity. Just have different mentors to get different perspectives on different things. So one of the things that I found is really important is be persistent. Um, I, like I said, I before even getting to Duke, I was in the stats department. Like I told them I wanted to be there, and obviously, do it to a certain certain extent. See what reaction you get. If they're like, please stop, <laughs> tell me back to me. Like. Don't keep going, but I think it's really important to let them know that you're interested in talking to them. Even just being straight up and saying, I really like what you do, I'm interested in your work, can you help guide me? I'm lost or I just want someone to tell me that what I'm doing is good. Um, so it's really important just to like open that dialogue. Also be uncomfortable. So like I said, math wasn't my strong suit, but I liked it better. So it's important to just try and I know a lot of you are in STEM already or taking computer science. So if it's not the easiest for you, that doesn't mean it's not for you. Also, ask questions. Um, email. Go to office hours. Office hours are a super great resource. This way you can get to know your professors, um, get to know the TAs. I used to TA, so I really appreciated when students would come to me and ask questions because it made me feel better just to be able to help them as well when I was grading their homeworks, I be like, well, at least a lot of these people are like learning um, and trying to do better. Uh, so it kind of gives you that leg up if people know you, um, if you tell, if you ask questions. Even if you don't really have a question to ask at office hours, it's good to just be there, listen to other people's questions, um, see what other people are struggling with, see if you can help. A lot of students will often go to office hours and just help other students. Uh, especially with computer science, I found we had a community in the basement of our library where every single comp sci student would just sit there midnight, hour, 4, hour, 4 a.m., all hours, and just sit there and help other students. So that was really nice to have as well. Also have an agenda. So like I said, don't just go to these professors and be like, help me, oh my god. Um, kind of say what you're looking for. Do you want to have a goal in technology or a job in technology in the industry? Do you want to have a job in banking? Is that more the route that you want to go, but you still want that technical background? Or even if you're just struggling with college, like ask them, how do I, how do I do better? Like I, I didn't pass this test, or I didn't do as well as I had wanted to. So like, what do I do now? Also for emails, I find it really important to be professional. So don't be too colloquial unless they respond and they're super uh, relaxed. It's kind of offensive also to the professor if you're just, just typing out and be like, oh my gosh, yay, uh, lol. So it's really important to actually be professional because um, essentially you want something from them and you want to be able to help them as well. So if you're asking for all this stuff and then not showing any respect to them, there's no reason why they would want to help you. And this is something that a lot of students actually find don't do. Um, or even sometimes I'll get emails now and they'll just be like, hey, Heather, what's up? Like, hope you're well, but this is what I want from you. And I'm like, oh, 
okay? And there's no closing, there's nothing. So it's really important just to have that dialogue, at least at the beginning when you're introducing yourself to someone. Um, this way they, that mutual respect comes back. Yeah, and so like I said, like mutual benefit. Yes, you wanna help yourself, but you also, it's really great to be able to help the professor or your or other students. Um, so if you can go to a professor and say, I really like your, your project that you're working on, can I help you? Or can I work in the office? Can I um, assist you with this project or go on to research and help them that way? So you're learning at the same time and they know you, but then you're also helping them. So it's really great for a mentor to have a back and forth relationship. And so like I said, ask for help. And that doesn't mean just like academic resources. So there, when I started, I was really bad at time management. And so after my first year, I was like, oh my gosh, what do I do? And we had an academic resource center. And I was able to go to someone and talk about time management. I realized that was not the method for me. Um, because seeing my really busy schedule backed out was extremely, it was extremely difficult to watch. It was like, made my anxiety go all the way up because it was just like, okay, at 8 a.m. I'm going to wake up, at 9 a.m. I'm going to eat, and then 10, I'm going to go to class and then work on this project, and I was like, nope, can't do it. So it's different for everyone, but you do have those resources available at most schools, and if you don't, you can always reach out to me if you have any questions of how to do how to manage your time, how to manage your schedule, even what classes to pick uh, next semester. There's a lot of people that can help you. Um, then also your peers. Asking for help uh, from your peers is really, really beneficial because even if it's a student that's a year older than you, they've probably been there as well and know that one, that one bug that you have and can't get rid of it. It's also really nice to have a second pair of eyes so when you miss that colon or that comma, they can help you before like eight hours have passed. Like, oh my gosh, like, I know it works, but yeah, and then you waste so much time. But then also like I know how college, how hard college is, so there are also other options for asking for help. So if, if you're in this like extremely like pressured setting, it's often that people get really overwhelmed and so like I did, I had, I had to go to see like our therapist on campus. And like, if you need that, it's really good just to talk to someone, even if it's not something extreme, just to have somewhere to vent, because I, it's difficult to talk to your parents and be like, oh, I'm not doing well in this class, like what do I do? And all, they don't know the pressures that are going on like, on the campus or in your classes. They don't know that everyone else is interning at this position at this company and you and you couldn't get one it's really difficult because from their perspective they're like you're from high school you're always that top student you did really well um, and you're like their golden child obviously so it's difficult when they when they hear that you're having an issue um, it was really difficult for my parents like I remember one semester I came home and my dad was like I'm tired of this like you're getting Dean's list next semester and I was like nope <laughs> I was like I was like it's time like that I like go ask someone else for their perspective because it's hard and and it can be a really challenging spot not even just academically but just socially um, the pressures are really really hard um, so there are those options and it's and it's a good way to like talk about mental health in general as well because right now there's such a stigma around it. But if you're the one who's asking for help and trying to make yourself better, why should that be an issue? Like why is that bad if you're getting help? Like and you knew you can find you were able to like identify the problems that you have and try to change them. So it's it's I think the most beneficial thing that you can do for yourself is if you need help, go ask for it. Then also just like Give your professor something to root for. If you're working on a project or if you're volunteering, just tell them. You can let them know, to, like, like, oh, I'm having this conference or I'm going to this big rally. I would love your support. Or just to tell them, look, we had 200 students there and it's really great. So it's something that you just want to make them proud, honestly. It's like a second parent. They're, your parents aren't there. So if you can make them really proud of you and having this mentor who will support you in any way, it's really useful. Um, but then there's also the opportunities where like, 
you don't know where to find a mentor. Um, maybe you didn't click with your professor, or maybe you were sick for a certain amount of time and didn't get that in at the beginning. Um, so, I like to say, but procrastinate by being productive. So, you might not have to do your own schoolwork to be productive. So, I always had an issue of like, if I'm doing something that's not schoolwork, what am I doing? Like, I have so much more to do. But I was also able to like, have a schedule, join clubs. Um, so I was part of ACM in college. And that really helped me because I was able to just learn other things. Um, we had a lot of panels with different speakers. And it wasn't schoolwork, but I was learning. And I was able to meet other students. I was able to meet professors. And that actually is kind of how I'm here at Microsoft because I was able to get really involved in statistics, but I had that problem with computer science where I wasn't super confident in my abilities and I didn't know all the professors that well. But by joining ACM or different clubs, I was able to meet more professors and I'll go into that a little bit after, but yeah, so that was really useful for me. Um, I also volunteered a lot. I, it was kind of what I, you know, Hunger Games, so. There you go. I volunteer. So volunteering is great. Yes, it it's helping other students or helping other people, but it's also I think a good way to de-stress. At least for me, you you kind of get that selfish benefit of look, I helped someone. It's really nice to see that. Um, so I volunteered once a week and helped students or helped uh, underprivileged students in the area. And we played. We just played in the gym for an hour every week, and it was really nice. Like they would call me Tinkerbell, and every week I would come back, and they knew who I was. And it was nice to see that. Um, and yes, I wasn't working on my own schoolwork, but that was something that helped me. And so if you have hobbies, take the time for yourself. Yes, schoolwork is always going to be there. There's always something else to do, but you are more important. And that took a really long time for me to figure out. Probably not until senior year when I actually got this job did I realize like, wow, I'm really burnt out, I'm really, like, I don't know what else to do with my time. I was just like, oh my gosh, it's so overwhelming. Like, why didn't I realize this before? So even just like not having a 4.0 GPA, that was really difficult for me. And until I started getting interviews, and just to let you know, if even if you don't have 4.0, just because you're in, like, you're women in tech, it's, we need that diversity right now. So there are a lot of opportunities. So even if you don't have a 4.0, you're still gonna get interviews. I can almost guarantee it. Like people want you, and it's not. It just because you have that grade doesn't mean it's a complete indication of who you are, what you're doing. You could be doing side projects and helping different professors, and that's. It's not the be all and end all. So don't get down on yourself if you don't have an A plus in every class. Bs are okay. Cs are okay. You're learning. One of my professors, I who was my mentor actually, she told me, like, yeah, if people get an 80 in my class, it's 80% of a new topic that you didn't know, not I didn't learn 20%. So it's a different way of looking at it, and I really appreciated that thought, because she was like, wow, you came in knowing absolutely nothing in this topic, but look how much you did learn. So it was kind of the, you don't really see that in a lot of professors. A lot of professors, they, they, instead of adding, like when you get your homework back, you'll see minus five, minus five, and then other teachers would be like plus 10. So for getting it correct, you've got all these points. Um, so it's just a different mentality that a lot of professors don't necessarily employ. Um, so just telling yourself that I think is really important because yeah, you came in and like if you're taking multivariable calculus, you, I, I didn't know anything about it before. I don't know if you guys can just pick up multivariable calculus, but you learned 80% of a brand new topic, and yeah, you still have that, that gap to bridge, but at least you're on that way. So, like I said, I was part of ACM. I met different professors in the computer science department, and I was able to get a scholarship to go to the Grace Hopper Conference through my school. They chose 10 students to go, and I was lucky enough to be one of them. And in case you haven't heard of Grace Hopper Conference, or it's a celebration of women in computing based um, from the Anita Borg Institute. And Grace Hopper was a huge uh, technologist in the Navy. Um, and so it's, 
If it's a good idea, go ahead and do it. It's much easier to apologize than it is to get permission. So I think that's a really great quote of just try. Just if you try and do something and fail, that's fine. That's how we're that's how we can be innovative. That's how we can make the most change. Making figuring out our mistakes and what will go wrong. Um, even if you look at like people who do like quality assurance, they're the ones who are going in and breaking everything. And you need them there because Otherwise, your program will your program will fail once you hit that one edge case. So it's important to try and mess up over and over again because you're learning and you know not to make those mistakes ever again. And yeah, Grace Hopper was a lot of fun. Um, we had different parties, got a lot of swag, uh, which was awesome. So I had a full bed. But then I got to meet really awesome people. Or not, I didn't get to meet Megan Smith, but. I got to hear her speak, and she, if you don't know who Megan Smith is, she's the first female chief technologist uh, officer of the United States. There's only been three. Um, it's brand new to this administration, and she's the first female. So it's really awesome to hear what her experience was. Grace Hopper was an amazing networking event, and just a great way to see how what other women in the area are doing. Um, it doesn't just have to be in the industry. There was a lot of academic professors who were there. Um, there was a huge career fair, so that's actually how I got to Microsoft, because I was approached there uh, by Microsoft and interviewed there. So it was an amazing opportunity for me, but I know also it was not just career-wise. It was great just to see what other people are doing, what other women are actually capable of without without the hindrance of being a woman. Like, that shouldn't bring you down. That should bring you up. Like that, you're you get to do so much, and it doesn't matter if you're male, if you're a man, woman. You're contributing to the community, and there's so much you can do. Like this year, I think there are eight thousand people at this conference. Last year it was four thousand. Um, so it's com it's doubling so much. So if you do have the opportunity to try and get to this conference, um, it's always in a different location. It's a great opportunity just to see what's going on, learn, meet people, um, and networking is honestly one of your best bets. If you network, I mean, you hear it all the time, it's who you know that gets you, that gets you places. I don't necessarily think it should be that way, um, but it's gonna be realistic, that's how it is oftentimes. How you, who you know can help you, um, so by networking, trying to leverage other people's skills, other people's networks as well, that will really help you. And then you can help them as well. So if you connect two people that you meet, you're helping them and it doesn't really do much for you, but it's nice just to say like, okay, like wow, I connected these two amazing people and now they're making this amazing project. Um, so there are a lot of scholarships from different companies, the Grace Hopper Foundation actually has a lot of scholarships. Schools often send you, but if you can get there, I do highly recommend getting there. And so now here I am at Microsoft after uh, interviewing tons of places, finally chose here, and I'm still able to do exactly what I like. What I like. So I finally found out that I might not be the best in math, but I really enjoy statistics. I really like data munging, which I know most people hate. Um, dirty data is, it's hard. Uh, and most, most data sets you get don't, aren't clean. Um, so I actually really enjoyed that and I was able to use computer science and statistics. And now I'm working with Azure Machine Learning. So just bring it up quickly just in case people don't know what it is. Um, so if you go to, studio.azureml.net. Um, there's different opportunities uh, for you to learn and you can sign in, but there's also a gallery. Uh, and there's all these different experiments that you can just use and try, see what other people are working on, um, just to learn. It's a great opportunity to learn. So it's a really easy tool that allows you to just, um, so this is a workspace, but really easy tool that if you've never done data science before, you can just drag and drop everything. You don't need to know the background so much of 
what a two class decision for us does. You can just drag it in and try it. If it doesn't work, try again. Um, so I've been lucky enough to be able to focus on data science, focus uh, my, my passions on in what I do for work. So if you're lucky enough to get that, like, make sure you don't settle. Do what you like, even if you, even if it's not the easiest, if it doesn't come super easy to you. Like, so math didn't come really easy to me. I was much, I can write a paper like that. And I think one time I started the paper, not saying you should do this, started the paper at 10 p.m. It was due at like 8 a.m. and I got an A plus on it. Um, I was, it was like a 10 page paper too. And I was like, I don't know how I just pulled that out, but somehow they liked it. And so for me, that was really, that came really easy. Um, and math didn't. So make sure you follow your passion. If you, even if it's hard for you, you can try, try, try again until you decide like, oh, maybe I actually really don't like this. Then it's okay to say no, that you don't want that. But if you don't actually try, you'll never know. Um, so I've been lucky enough to actually be in the position where I can follow my passions, which I and follow my passions so that I can do machine learning, data science, but then I don't have to do such intense things. I don't have to look at solving, like, uh, curing cancer. I can look at, okay, let, let's look at all of uh, the president's, presidential candidates' tweets. Um, can we do a tweet sentiment analysis on that? So I get to do more fun things as well and do what, I, what I'm interested in. So these are just some of the tips that I think were really important for me and that I learned, and it took me a really long time to learn. Um, so I'm hoping that other people will try to employ these methods earlier on so that they don't struggle as much. And like I said, it's okay to ask for help. Still here. <laughs> it's okay to ask for help. You can ask me for help. You can ask um, if your family is who you go to, you can ask your family for help. It's okay to say, I'm struggling. What do I do now? Um, yeah. It's okay to say, like, I'm struggling. How can you help me? Find a good mentor. Uh, make sure that if they're the ones you feel comfortable with, try to help them as well. Be appreciative. Uh, thank them all the time. I would take my professors out to lunch. That's a really great way to meet them as well. Um, just take them out to lunch, say, I just want to talk to you, get to know you on a more personal level. This way it's not just so cut and dry, like, oh, you're in my class, that's it. After the class, what do you do now? You meet so many, you have so many professors, you meet so many people. Let's just, let's take out the, that they're, they're your professors, now make it into a more personal relationship. So if you want to contact me, um, I'm on Twitter as MicroMother. Um, you can also email me, so like I said, if anyone has any questions, I'll be here all day. So if you have need any advice or just want to talk, see, other, see what I did or see how you can get involved, I'm totally open to that. Um, if you have any clubs that you want us to maybe get more involved in on your campus or at your school, I can totally help with that as well. So if you want to email me um, at hshapiro at microsoft.com, that's great too. And so like I said, I'll be here all day. So I'm totally open to answering any questions. If I can help mentor anyone, that would be great. Uh, I'm, I really want to make this the best experience for you. And if, if I could do that, that'd be a great way for me to be, to be happy. <laughs> so thanks.